Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, NAV skills webinar. Um, it sounds a bit strange, right? NAV skills. Maybe we should consider renaming ourselves to something else, uh, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, today, we're going to uh, take a first look at uh, Business Central, and I'm very happy to have found Alexander and Dimitri uh, prepared to do that. Um, both Alexander and Dimitri were in the uh, good position to have attended uh, directions in Asia where Microsoft launched the uh, product or previewed the product to the audience. And as of yesterday, the product is, uh, is globally available. So nothing is uh, a secret anymore. I'm pretty sure that uh, all of you have uh, a lot of questions, uh, just like I do. Um, I'm going to give the floor first to uh, Alexander, where he's going to do uh, an introduction into uh, especially licensing and availability of the product. And then Dimitri will uh, dive into the uh, technical aspect of the product. And the plan is to have uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, at the end for uh, Q and A. Um, you can find the recording of this webinar, of course, on our YouTube channel. Let's have a uh, quick look. Um, we did. We are close to 100,000. Yeah. Okay. So this is cool moment. We are exactly on 100,000 views in this webinar. Um, please use the GoToWebinar question window. Um, the advantage of using the question window is that we also get all the questions in an Excel sheet at the end. And we are going to collect all the questions that we cannot answer and we're going to forward them to Microsoft to, so to see if we can get any, any answers from there. Of course, thanks to Liberty Grow Software for sponsoring um, and allowing us to use their GoToWebinar uh, subscription. So with that, I'm going to give the floor to Alexander. Uh, make presenter. Alexander, you have the floor. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, it's good that you joined because this is a very specific moment and in the history of, of the product. My name is Alexander Ermakov. I'm a MVP in business solutions in, in NAV specifically. I've been doing NAV business for more than 15 years already. And I'm from Russia. I represent Russian partner and that's uh, a good moment to talk because the business central is now alive officially it has gone live yesterday and that's uh, basically a new system it has all the heritage of the old good navision and nav but it has a lot of changes and the product team has been doing a very good job they were working like crazy all those months to get the product up and running and they did it so you now can see the um, system alive we've been in the directions asia and we've discussed with the product team all the latest news and here you can see the uh, typical ecosystem slide which you uh, already had seen previously perhaps now the change is that it's uh, depicted in a different colors. Uh, this is actually the classical color scheme of, of the business solution now. And indeed, the Nemex 365 Business Central is now a part of the global ecosystem. So it's not just an ERP as such, but it's a part of infrastructure that Microsoft provides to the customers. And that's um, a world-class cloud service with uh, extremely short up upgrade time and uh, a great bunch of different telemetries and with a extremely reliable uptime. It offers quite a lot of customer benefits. Uh, and like we might host uh, separate sessions on just describing the benefits. I would shortly point out some of those um, so a lot of changes happened 
There is a single place for settings. Um, there is a redesigned assisted setup with wizards that allow you to set up many things now. Uh, there is a much better manual setup. Um, service connections and extensions uh, also were a little bit redesigned, so you can manage them from setup and extensions page as well as all the other extensions are listed there. Um, user task setup uh, also is one of the features. Um, role center has been also completely redesigned. You can also uh, will delete completed user tasks. Uh, when you attach a new image to a contact card, it automatically recognizes the age and the gender. I think you saw already uh, some blog posts regarding that. Uh, the same with items. When you identify uh, item from a picture, the item category and attributes uh, could be assigned automatically. Uh, company display name, new PowerShell, command lets for server start and stop, uh, dynamical change of server properties, Excel write back, one of the smallest downtime in the history, so the schema synchronization can now be done with other users online, and uh, extensions, cost to uninstall and reinstall has been totally eliminated, per tenant data upgrade now can be done with the users online, and many other things. Uh, that's actually quite a long list uh, regarding the item charges and intercompany changes and posting groups and, and, and so on. It's a very short webinar to talk about everything. And so thanks for the good job, the product team. And we'll be looking forward for more enhancements that they would prepare for us. Uh, as for the system itself, it's now uh, a part of the whole Microsoft IT landscape. It allows customers to operate with many things in one system, which is very flexible. So this is how Microsoft sees a system as a single comprehensive solution that covers a variety of business processes with the same system. And since this is a webinar hosted by Mark Brummel, I have to make a joke about Marco Perisic, uh, but that's a, that's a small one. So uh, speaking about the roadmap of the product, the first step has already been taken, and this has been uh, a short one. So in April 02, Business Central Cloud version went live. It went live with uh, many, but not all localizations. And it replaced basically Dynamics 365, Tenerife, and uh, Dynamics 365 for finance and operations business edition. And I hope I'm telling this for the last time. Um, so it's uh, available in uh, several countries. Then, a next step is expected. It's a bigger one. A world one version should come up in summer together with Australian and New Zealand localizations. And one of the reasons why world one version is coming after the release of some localizations is that there is a discussion in the product team to include as many good features from existing localizations to world one version as possible to make it more universal, which I consider as a very good step forward. So that's why one of the reasons the World 1 version will come up only in summer. Then there would be even a bigger step forward. And we will have in autumn of 2018 a Business Central on-prem version with the same code base as the cloud version and the same user interface as the cloud version. There is no information about 2000 NAV, uh, NAV 2018 R2. Uh, most likely it would not be released and all the other releases would be based on uh, Business Central. However, uh, as I understood, NAV 2018 will, would be still uh, released with the cumulative updates for some years further. 
uh, but most of the attention, of course, would be paid to Business Central. And this is the official slide from um, the keynote on uh, Directions Asia with, with the product evolution. So indeed, uh, in the autumn of 2018, uh, a new Business Central on-prem would be released. And again, it would have the same code base. Um, so, so that's actually a good present from the whole product team to all the partners and the customers, but there are more presents to come. Uh, speaking about the licensing part, which has been quite difficult within the last month because a lot of things were not clear, um, I will present now the vision that I had received based on discussions with the product team and licensing team, but still this is not the final version. I mean, it could be changed anytime by Microsoft. So the information that would be presented now is um, under a serious disclaimer that it could be changed in the future. So with the documents that uh, had been officially released, uh, there would be two types of users, the full users and additional users. And full users are the users whose work requires use of the variety of features within the, the business applications. They might be salespeople or, or customer service representatives or finance employers. And they, uh, in, in the history, they were previously referred as a pro users or power users. So these full users are licensed with a Dynamics 365 Business Central subscription. And additional users are those limited users who represent uh, a huge part of the users within the organization that might consume some data or reports or complete some light tasks or so, and so on. So they do not require all the capabilities, but they require some access. So these additional users are now treated as team members. And speaking about the licenses and the costs, the team members, they can basically read everything. They can approve, they can run reports, they can do some other things with the cost or end customer license of $8 per month. There is another type of the full user, which is called uh, Essentials. Essentials, they can do everything except service management and manufacturing at the cost of $70 per month. And the premium full users, they can basically do everything except including service management and manufacturing where their license and customer cost of uh, $100 US dollar per month. These are valid for new customers. Uh, speaking about the team members, because this has been historically the most interesting part, what can a limited user do and what it cannot. He can read everything. He can update existing data and entries in the system means like if there is a customer card or vendor or item card which already exists, they can edit those. Uh, they can approve or reject tasks in workflows assigned to users. They can work with quotes. They can uh, operate with the personal information. Um, they can also edit timesheets and also they can use Power Apps with Dynamics 365 as uh, a license for Power Apps applications uh, is included also in a team member license. In order to have at least one team member, you need to have also at least one essential or premium user in the system. Uh, so in order to get actually access to the business central, you really need to have at least one essentials or premium user license. Uh, it is a named user license for essential or premium, but the named user can use uh, the system and have access from multiple devices. So the license includes Power Apps for Dynamics 365 
and you can invite one external accountant per tenant at no additional cost. The licenses are sold. We are CSP program partners only on a subscription basis and no dual use rights. So Business Central would be available only as an online service so far. When on-prem version would be released, the same license rules would be applied there, but you would not be able to have the same user accessing online and on-prem version. Um, so minimal license quantity would be one with the same basically limitations that were inherited from uh, the previous online version, which is a business edition. So you would have also unlimited file storage and unlimited database storage with unlimited companies uh, with uh, limited Cartana intelligence access per month, which you can also buy extra if needed. Uh, speaking about the existing customers, what would happen to them? So uh, the offer now is a 40% discount for existing users. An existing user is either a perpetual licensed customer or uh, existing business 365, 365 business edition user. So if you have an active subscription by March 16, you are in the program to upgrade to Business Central with a 40% discount. And the offer applies to all the users of the customer account in transition. And what the good thing is that you can actually utilize more seats in this transition. So let's say if you have uh, five customers uh, licensed uh, with the uh, a perpetual license on-prem, then you can actually switch to Business Central and with a 40% discount get even more users licensed. So the offer is available from yesterday through a couple of years ahead. Uh, so you have actually time to consider and talk to your customers uh, and go smoothly to a, a transition period. Uh, licensing of additional objects has been actually an interesting question and there are several different options when we talk about additional objects. So objects that are in the range from 70 million to 75 million, uh, they're given for free when you are registering your application in the app source. So this is the heritage from the business edition in a cloud. So once you create your app and publish it in the app source, uh, Microsoft gives you a range of the objects for free and then your customers are able to download the, your application from, from app source. Um, objects between 1 million and 6 million range are given by vendor again for free for ISV partner solutions. Okay, in this case, um, partners should fulfill the needed requirements to create and publish the ISV solution. But once they do this, uh, Microsoft also offers the same object range for free. And the good thing that this would be available both on premises and on cloud versions for Business Central. So this means that you can create your ISV solutions um, for on-prem installation using that range. And then you can actually also publish it to an app source. And with the same object range, they could be downloaded uh, from the app source. The app source for that part is not available yet, uh, but it would be available quite soon. How soon I cannot tell so far, but we expect it to be really soon. Um, and then also objects between 50,000 and uh, 100,000 range, they are again given for free. And if you deploy on-premise extensions uh, per tenant, 
you can uh, install that to your on prem you would be able to install that to your on premise business solution business central solution you would not be able to publish it to app store officially for download but you could uh, upload that directly to a tenant of, of the own cloud of the cloud version in the future so basically this means that the additional objects in all the cases are somehow provided for free and then uh, for ISV solutions, uh, ISV providers would sell them to their customers within the, the price that uh, they arrange. Um, so there are a few useful links that you can go and check. So that's um, the first one describes the, the licensing part. So not all that I've been talking to uh, about what is described now in a hard paper document on that portal, but part of that it is. Uh, then if you are thinking of building your uh, ISV solution or an app, you can go to the readiness page and check uh, how it looks like. And then of course you're welcome to see the, the YouTube video created by, by the product team. Um, with that in mind, I'm giving the word to Dmitry, and he would tell you a bit more about uh, the technical part. Thank you for your time. If you would have any questions, you can always ask them uh, directly. You can drop me an email if, if you want. Dmitry? Yeah. Thank you, Alexander. Um, do you hear me well? Yep, just fine. Yeah, okay. And uh, thank you, Alexander, for your first part. I think that uh, those um, photo with uh, Marco Persic with a uh, cake will become a top meme. <laughs> <Something weird. laughs> um, welcome uh, everybody uh, and uh, my name is uh, Dmitry Katzon and uh, I live in St. Petersburg um, and I am uh, NAV fan and NAV expert for 13 years. Um, now uh, I, wa I was uh, um, an owner and CEO of an now design company, but uh, some time ago I sold it, and uh, now I have created a new company which is called Arabs. And the goal for creation it is uh, to make uh, business uh, central um, <clears throat> more useful for end users and uh, more widely. Um, with with the more experience, more apps, and also to help uh, other partners to move their IP to uh, app source. So uh, my uh, I, I will have uh, four topics, and then we will move to Q and A. Uh, I will show you briefly uh, a new web client, a new UI of uh, uh, Dynamics uh, 365 Business Central. Um, then I will uh, show you what are headlines. Uh, and uh, headlines are a very interesting uh, topic. It's a new topic. That's why I'll concentrate your focus on it on today's webinar because uh, we don't have much time to cover all technical parts, but these technical parts, I think, it will be more in interesting. Um, so, uh, new UI. We will log in to new business control. Uh, this is uh, a virtual machine from Azure. Uh, 
Um, and uh, this uh, business central uh, works on uh, Docker. Um, uh, you will have uh, two options uh, how to um, how to extend uh, your uh, business central. Uh, you have an option to make online sandbox and uh, or to make uh, hosted uh, Docker. So um, here is a new uh, UI, and um, I think that uh, most of you know. Uh, uh, the previous uh, UI, and uh, to show you what is uh, uh, the really difference, except a new uh, wonderful uh, simple design and uh, new colors. Uh, I will uh, also show you a Windows client, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll uh, uh, we will. Um, uh, look at uh, where our actions and so on. So um, going from the top and down, uh, here is a, a top line, and uh, this uh, top line is uh, basically our uh, menu uh, where it was on the left. And uh, uh, you can uh, click on it, and uh, you will have additional options uh, how to start uh, your uh, pages. Um, then moving down, uh, you have additional line, and uh, this is uh, uh, the menu items itself from the home uh, menu suite. Um, so um, uh, it's um, uh, the, the main idea that uh, you will uh, uh, make uh, your development of uh, role uh, center as you uh, made it before, but uh, all uh, this is uh, uh, rendered uh, on online when you open a web client. Uh, then we have uh, um, headlines. Headlines is a new part of uh, role center, and it shows us. Uh, some uh, business news, some business news, and we will cover it more detailed uh, in some minutes. And here we have actions. So uh, we have some actions to create new orders, to create new invoices, and also some actions that are grouped. Uh, and if we look at Windows client, uh, these are actions. These are these actions. So uh, you see here on Windows clients, you see uh, a group and an action itself. And uh, in uh, UI, you don't see action itself. You should uh, uh, click and uh, uh, click on it. Um, then uh, going down, you have activities. And uh, if you look at Windows client, you will see that uh, we have the same activities here, um, but uh, three activities on the top, uh, they are the same design as another activities in the Windows client, but in uh, a web client, they are uh, designed a little bit uh, uh, another. Uh, and um, this is a new, um, op a new action um, and a new type so when you open for example uh, activities and you have here a uh, queue group uh, and go to uh, go to options yeah uh, here you have a layout which is uh, white so uh, all activities um, that you group in a queue group and uh, mark it as a layout wide uh, will have um, this uh, design. Uh, they will be highlighted and uh, the background will be also uh, white. Uh, then going down, you have your activities and, and that then you have uh, before, and you have also uh, project videos here. We can uh, click on it and also 
uh, you will have uh, uh, YouTube videos inside of uh, uh, Business Central. And then going down, you have uh, different uh, Power BI uh, reports and uh, um, and uh, Business Central reports. And uh, you have uh, here a nice uh, button back on the top. Yeah. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, you have here some uh, new options. Uh, you can personalize your uh, role center and you can design it. So if uh, you can, if you click on personalize, you can, uh, for example, uh, hide uh, something or move uh, uh, parts. Uh, when you making uh, design, uh, basically you have a different color uh, of uh, screen here, violet uh, that you are designing. Basically, you can make the same things uh, with uh, one uh, difference. Uh, and the difference is uh, very important. Uh, when you personalize, uh, you are making it uh, your own, um, it, it, it will be your own uh, uh, interface of uh, business control and uh, nobody else in your company will uh, see it and uh, you cannot uh, apply your uh, designed um, uh, role, role center um, uh, page to another user um, basically it will save uh, the objects of uh, um, page uh, customization and uh, when you click on uh, designer uh, the output of uh, this design will be an extension and uh, this extension will be installed on this uh, tenant and everybody uh, every user uh, after this will have uh, the same uh, design of uh, a role center um, and also what we have interesting if we go to extensions uh, you have an option um, to first you have an option to uninstall any extension and after when it's uninstalled it's uh, marked here that not installed and also you can uh, uh, install it uh, again uh, and what's more interesting, you can upload extension. Uh, it, uh, you, you cannot uh, make it before with uh, even NAV uh, 2018. Uh, you should, uh, previously, you uh, should uh, upload uh, extensions only via PowerShell and publishing comments. And now you can, uh, if you have uh, .app, uh, um, file you can simply uh, select it and uh, uh, deploy your um, extension to your tenant this is what uh, about uh, alexander told when uh, uh, he, he, he discussed uh, uh, 50000 ranges so uh, that's how for example you can uh, upload uh, 50000 ranges uh, customization to uh, an extension uh, to uh, to a tenant. Uh, and uh, Microsoft uh, published uh, Control Edin style guide. Uh, if you um, if you develop uh, your own uh, uh, Edins, uh, please uh, follow this uh, guide. Uh, this uh, types and uh, colors uh, all is uh, described here. And uh, uh, what's also interesting was on uh, uh, Directions Asia, uh, Microsoft uh, showed us this, this uh, slide that uh, this uh, modern uh, UI wasn't born in uh, one uh, night. It, uh, it is a very great job of a team. Uh, and I, think, I personally think it's uh, very beautiful and simple and uh, people will love it. Um, 
moving forward. Um, so, uh, what is uh, the, the new features? Uh, the new feature in uh, Business Central is uh, headlines, and uh, I call uh, headlines uh, my personal business news, and Microsoft calls it uh, headlines. Um, and um, technically, uh, headlines um, are a pages. Um, uh, with a page uh, with a page uh, type uh, headline part, and if we will uh, look at uh, uh, C-Site uh, Object Designer, we will see that uh, Microsoft has uh, created headlines for uh, these uh, role centers, and uh, for every uh, uh, role center, uh, there is two headlines it's a greeting and a, a documentation and uh, uh, so page type is a headline part as i told you and um, um, when you add a headline part uh, you should uh, add it to the top of a uh, role center and uh, it um, show one headline uh, for about uh, five, uh, f uh, five, eight seconds. Because when I merged it, uh, it was eight seconds. And uh, when I uh, look at the technical uh, uh, documentation, they, uh, I figured out that uh, it should be five seconds. So it's uh, five to eight seconds. And uh, then it cycles through uh, every headline. And um, um you can uh, um, drill down uh, into headline we'll look at this a little bit uh, further and um, um, what you uh, should uh, think about when you uh, create headlines then um, first it should be like a little wow uh, effect to a user uh, but it should be a data uh, insight so uh uh, it should it uh, should be the first place when user uh, logins to the system and uh, it looks at uh, headlines and uh, it understanding uh, how it uh, how his business works. Um, and uh, with headlines, we have um, three new terms: it's uh, qualifier text, payload text, and uh, emphasize text. And um, uh, here on screenshots, uh, you can see that uh, qualifier text is a, uh, is a name of headline. And uh, payload text is a uh, headline text itself. And emphasize uh, text is um, a highlight, some highlighted uh, uh, interesting um, item or some information that a user should uh, uh, that uh, that uh, this uh, headline is about. And as I told you, we have um, um, uh, two um, uh, we have uh, two um, headlines by default. It's a greeting uh, headline and it's a description headline. And the greeting headline uh, it uh, will give you. Uh, different text um, depending on uh, time and uh, technically you can uh, uh, you can use uh, uh, this uh, function get user greeting text in headline management and um, if uh, user has full name it will tell you good morning Dimitri for example um, and the greeting headline uh, will be hidden after 10 minutes uh, from uh, logon. Uh, so don't panic if you will uh, lose it. You should uh, re-log in and you will see it again. Um, but when you look at uh, um, when you look at uh, role center, uh, you will you see that uh, first headline was hidden yeah, because 10 minutes. Uh, uh, after Logan. And uh, here we have another uh, headlines, uh, but they uh, don't exist here. Yeah. 
Uh, so what is it? Uh, it is a, it is an extension. If you go to uh, extension management, uh, you will see that uh, this extension is essential business headlines, and uh, this uh, it's interesting part. Uh, it's interesting to analyze uh, how it's made. Um, uh, so. Um, Extensions, uh, essential business headlines extension give you one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different headlines uh, based on uh, the user. And um, I will not go deeply in uh, every. You can um, uh, look at uh, YouTube video this slide. Uh, what's more important, they are not online. Uh, they update every 10 minutes uh, by uh, job queue. And um, I will show you a little demo uh, with some tricks. Um, so if you host your uh, NAV, uh, sorry, Business Central on uh, Docker, uh, you can uh, go to uh, inside a container and uh, look at um, um, what, uh, folders, and you will see their folders uh, extension. If you will go there, uh, you will see all extensions, uh, app app files uh, of, uh, that uh, are installed and could be installed uh, with a business control. And uh, but how to get it? Um, you can, for example, uh, copy uh, this uh, extension um, from uh, Docker um, uh, to a host machine. And uh, uh, you will have it here on uh, my uh, folder. Uh, and uh, But I want to uh, in, analyze uh, what's uh, code there. Um, and here is a little trick how to how you can uh, make it. We will copy it uh, to another folder, document L, and uh, we will rename it from uh, app extension to uh, RAR. So you will have an archive here, and uh, you can um, extract it. Uh, I can tell tell you that it uh, works only with uh, RAR. Don't work with uh, WinZip. And uh, you can uh, open it, open this folder in Visual Studio Code. And uh, uh, you will have all uh, the sources. Uh, as we don't have time, I will not go deeply in uh, every uh, every code unit. Uh, maybe I will create some blog about this, uh, or you can uh, discover it uh, by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we are on the time that we agreed that we would start with uh, questions. I don't know. Do you have a lot to cover or? Well, um, can you give me, uh, for example, seven minutes? Seven minutes. <laughs> and, seven. Uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of questions, but uh... okay, five five minutes. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> uh, I I just want to show you how to extend uh, uh, headlines, and uh, I will not go uh, uh, for uh, for every every my demo. But uh, I will. I, I want to show you uh, to the audience how how it's simple to make it. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, we'll do a more detailed webinar uh, in a few weeks. Okay. So should I stop now, or you will give me five minutes? But let's go into Q and A, and then uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure okay. we can go into a more detailed webinar. Um, okay. Yep. 
So um, thanks, Dimitri and Alexander. Um, we have a lot of questions already, um, and um, we uh, uh, have probably more questions from uh, from others uh, that they haven't typed yet. Uh, so I have a question from John Long. Uh, he says the same code base does that mean that Business Central in October will only have AL, or is Seaside also there uh, when they ship in October? Okay, the answer. Uh, is <laughs> Alex, you want to go? Ah, oh, Dmitry. Um, well, I, I can answer this question. Seaside uh, uh, will be there. Uh, it's an official uh, official answer from Microsoft, but uh, um, no one uh, can tell you how long it will be there. Um, so uh, you should uh, uh, you should um, uh, move to you should start moving to extensions if you uh, didn't start it yet. Okay, um, any changes to the CFMD requirements? Uh, at the moment, at least I don't have any information whether the certification of Dynamics products should be changed. Uh, I don't, I have not read any official statement about that so far. Uh, yeah, you can make a wild guess that if objects are for free, why would you go CFMD unless it's on App Source, right? Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Um, with an, a limited user or a team member, can you still assign three tables that a user can write to? As far as I know, no, you can't. So but you can only it might... write to the you to the tables that Microsoft has assigned previous before. Yes, that's that's what I understood. Um, I have a question from Alan Butterfield, and he is specifically asking, uh, can you execute PowerShell commands from Business Central? But I want to take it a step wider, and let's say that. Can you execute .NET? Uh, because that's basically what you need to execute PowerShell scripts, right? So what about .NET? Uh, official answer from Microsoft that it will be available on-prem um, uh, with the Visual Studio Code and uh, AL uh, compiler. Uh, it's not available yet. Um, but uh, only on prem. If you we are talking about uh, um, if we are talking about uh, customizations uh, that will uh, be uploaded on a tenant, uh, or if we are talking about uh, uh, apps uh, that were, will be published on App Source, um, they will. Uh, you should have something something else like Azure Functions, for example. Yeah, exactly. So that story hasn't changed uh, compared to business edition. Um, did Microsoft add any new roles or role centers? Uh, well, um, I don't know if there are new role centers, but um, uh, when I uh, prepared for this webinar, uh, I covered that there are many uh, many role centers uh, available, uh, but not all of them are really redesigned, frankly speaking. Uh, okay. Because uh, yeah. So I have a question from my friend uh, Radu Chris. Um, is the W1 version available already? No. When is that expected? summer of this year. Okay. Uh, how do you take a backup or do a restore? Uh, well, uh, if you um, if you 
uh, use uh, online uh, uh, tenant, uh, then I think it's uh, it's done by Microsoft. Okay, is, is, if so you, is, uh, is, is yeah. it possible to send Microsoft an email that you want to go back to the backup of last Friday or? <laughs> Interesting question. I think we should cover it. Okay. I think yes. Why not? Um, if you um, uh, if you if you create a sandbox for development, will that contain all the live data, or is it a subset of the data, or do you get Cronus data? What what do you get if you create a a, a sandbox for development? Uh, it will, as I know, it will contain all the data from uh, production. So so that's also a way to create the backup. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I also um, uh, saw it on one blog that uh, you can uh, create uh, your sandbox and box envi uh, environment just uh, from uh, production, and it will uh, on the background uh, execute a PowerShell command for that. Okay. Is uh, is Microsoft having any size restrictions to the database? Uh, I've I've recently been helping a customer in in North America, and they grew their database by 10 gigabytes per month. Is, do you think Microsoft is prepared for that? If you would open the official document, it says that the database size is unlimited. Um, to which extent it's really unlimited, I don't know. But so far, uh, the statement is that there is no restriction. Okay. Let me go through the questions. So to repeat again, tables, everything is for free. No more buying of objects. Again, so far, yes. There is no guarantee that it would be not changed someday, but based on the situation now, it is, it is so. Uh, can you post a document with a team member user? Uh, I, I think no. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Has Microsoft made any changes to the way that you do the uh, app source uh, certification, or is it still exactly the same as Gunnar is describing in his blog? Uh, well, I can tell. Uh, I can say that. Uh, I found that uh, there is more one more additional step. I think it uh, there uh, it, it didn't exist uh, uh, earlier, but it's uh, a testing code unit. So uh, you should include uh, uh, testing test test code units in your apps. And okay. uh, if you yeah, and if you will explore, for example, uh, uh, Essentials headlines extension, which I uh, uh, um, and then uh, you will find also there uh, an example of uh, such uh, test code unit. Okay, yeah, the last time I checked, test code units were optional, they were not mandatory. So now we have a fun question. This is a dangerous subject after last week. Will there be special pricing for customers wanting to migrate from GP? Uh, what I heard, basically, if you are a um, Dynamics 365 customer, means that you can also have a X license, you can migrate to Business Central. I don't have information about GP, but I can guess that there might be a similar process. Okay. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should ask Microsoft, but they should be very careful publishing that. Mm. You know, I can I can I can speak out of experience that you don't want to get the GP community all over you. Um, so we already covered how to get a test database. You get your sandbox. Is it possible to use Rapid Start? Yes, uh, Rapid Start is there, as it uh, always been. 
Okay. Um, while I am searching through the questions, uh, I have a question myself. If I create a page extension as a user, and if I don't have any knowledge about the uh, background um, uh, architecture of the system, can I just, for example, add the invoice and the ship flag of the sales header to a page and fiddle around with it? Is there any protection of fields that should not be added to a page? Um, I can uh, answer this question. Um, as a user uh, and with a personalization or designer mode, uh, you cannot add uh, fields uh, that a developer will uh, hide. For example, you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot make visible all the fields. Yeah. Okay. Uh, only those that uh, you can. So Microsoft is protecting some fields. Um, browsing through the questions now to see if there's anything that we can cover quickly. Um, Alex Chow is asking, how does he access the D365 screen that you showed? Thanks, Joe. <laughs> um, you, uh, you can find, for example, um, information in my blog. Um, I have created a blog how, how you can get uh, uh, Business Central uh, in uh, Docker. Um, if if uh, I can share my screen, if you if you see it, uh, here is uh, my blog, uh, and um, there you can find uh, from the last uh, three blogs its information. Um, yeah, also, if uh, Mark uh, searching for questions, I can um, uh, show you this slide. Uh, I will hold uh, webinars uh, in the end of April. You can follow this uh, link uh, and uh, register there. It will be about app development and L and Docker and all, all this uh, stuff, and also machine learning. Yeah, we are at the uh, we are at the top of the uh, hour. Um, I think timing is perfect. Um, yes, we have one more ad addition yeah. to the last addition that we can actually go to the trials of Dynamics uh, Business Central and get uh, a free trial and, and and see it yourself through the the official portal at uh, trials.dynamics.com. Yep. I think that's a perfect way of, uh, of ending the webinar with uh, respect of everybody's time. Um, thanks for attending the webinar. And um, if you are very curious about uh, all of Dimitri's demos, don't worry. We will create a new webinar as soon as possible. Thank you for attending and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of the day.